the results of uh, tests. So you tested positive for a certain disease. Does it mean that you have the disease necessarily? Well, if that disease has been eradicated from the face of the earth, testing positive doesn't mean that you have the disease, even if the test was designed to, to be a pretty good one. So unfortunately, doctors do get it wrong also sometimes. And the reasoning that comes in such situations is pretty subtle. Now, for the rest of the lecture, what we're going to do is to take this example where we did three things and abstract them. These three trivial calculations that we just did are three very important, very basic tools that you use to solve uh, more general probability problems. So what's the first one? We find the probability of a composite event, two things happening, by multiplying probabilities and conditional probabilities. More general version of this. Look at any situation maybe involving lots and lots of events. So here's a story that event A may happen or may not happen. Given that A occurred, it's possible that B happens or that B does not happen. Given that B also happens, it's possible that event C also happens or that event C does not happen. And somebody specifies for you a model by giving you all these conditional probabilities along the way. Notice what we do along the branch uh, as the tree progresses. Any point in the tree corresponds to certain events having happened. And then, given that this has happened, we specify conditional probabilities. Given that this has happened, how likely is it that C also occurs? Given a model of this kind, how do we find the probability of this event? The answer is extremely simple. All that you do is move along the tree and multiply conditional probabilities along the way. So, in terms of frequencies, how often do all three things happen, A, B, and C? You first see how often does A occur. Out of the times that A occurs, how often does B occur? And out of the times where both A and B have occurred, how often does C occur? And you can just multiply those three frequencies with each other. Uh, what is the formal proof of this? Well, well, the only thing we have in our hands is the definition of conditional probabilities. So let's uh, just use this. And OK. Now, the definition of conditional probabilities tells us that the probability of two things is the probability of one of them times a conditional probability. Unfortunately, here we have the probability of three things. What can I do? Well, I can put a parenthesis in here and think of this as the probability of this and that and apply our definition of conditional probabilities here. The probability of two things happening is the probability that the first happens times the conditional probability that the second happens given A and B, given that the first one happened. So this is just the definition of the conditional probability of an event given another event. That other event is a composite one, but that's not an issue. It's just an event. And then we use the definition of conditional probabilities once more to break this apart and make it P of A, P of B given A, and then finally the last term. OK, so this proves the formula that I have up there on the slide. And if you wish to calculate any other probability in this diagram, for example, if you want to calculate this probability, you would still multiply the conditional probabilities along the different branches of the tree. In particular, here in this branch, you would have the conditional probability of uh, C complement given A intersection B complement, and so on. So you write down probabilities along all those three branches and just multiply them as you go.